So. All right, so what's our, what kind of thing is this? What rule are we going to follow? Product. product rule. It's a product, okay? So we'll take the first factor as being U, second factor as being V. What is the product rule going to give us here? U times V1. Okay, so we get X squared plus 2. One half X. Ah, okay. Yeah, now the derivative of the whole second factor, right? The whole second factor, the derivative of 1 is just going to go away. So we've really just got the derivative of X to what power? One the one half. What is the derivative of x to the one half? One half x to the negative one half. What? Right? Uh, Did not do that. Okay. Good. Plus. Okay. Plus. Square root of times two x. That's it. Can we bring the x to just the one half? Uh, well, because if this is x to the positive one half, okay, just can I keep the, the background noise just a little higher? So if this is x to the positive one half, we're going to pull the one half out front and subtract. Is that what you're asking? Did you know that so you subtract one from? Does that make sense? That gives you the minus one half. Yeah, I think in most cases you have to kind of read the question, but I think in most cases it's not going to be important to write it as a radical. They might sometimes ask you to. Usually, though, they're going to ask you to write it in terms of a positive exponent, although not always. Wait, could you, could you like simplify Yeah, we could. We, we could simplify this further. We, we could write this as 1 over 2 radical x, right? And, Wait, you could, um, like, you know, like, add I could. I, I could distribute. I could distribute this term all the way through. I could. It's, I mean, I'm not sure. No, it's not necessary in this case. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on, and we, we started talking about the quotient rule. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And you promised us you'd start off class with a different problem. Different problem. Here we go. Okay, so what? First of all, yeah, I'm gonna start moving. I'm gonna do a seating chart in here, no. pretty quick. Seriously, I'm about to. It's going to mainly be for that kind of that region back in there. It's going to be sort of where. So I'm just telling you, I'm about to do that for the first time in my calculus teaching career. So just be, be aware. Uh, so what is what is the the quotient rule? B U prime okay. minus U B prime over B C squared equals the quotient rule. There you go, quotient rule. Okay, so let's let's try this. So let's take, I'll give you an example. Quotient rule is, right at the very end of class yesterday, you might remember I mentioned that the quotient rule is, you have to be a little more careful with it because of that minus sign, right? We know that addition is commutative and associative, but subtraction is not, right? We know that A, what I mean is A plus B equals B plus A, but A minus B does not equal B minus A, right? So you got to remember the order very specifically. V D U D X minus U D B D X. I always remember it as V D U, sounds like video is how you start it, but there's also the, the high D low minus low, no, second. Yeah, low D high minus high D low, yeah, there you go. Because this is, this is the high. Right, this is the, the numerator is the high part, the denominator is the low part, so you can remember it as low d high minus high d low. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, d just means, right. Okay. It, it, whatever, or you can just remember it. I mean, whatever works for you. Okay, here's what I want you to do, though. Let's try this one. Let's do. Oh, we'll get to that one. Find y prime. Just for you. Okay, and would you agree, this is a case where yesterday we looked at, a, at an example of the power rule that we could have done. 
previously, right? We could have just expanded it out and, and differentiated it term by term. This one, we could not have done previously. Okay, let's try it. Let's just stare at it. The problem, oh, there's no problem. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll start with you for Simplify this one a little bit, for sure. So do you have the minus sign distribute to the B derivative too? Or well, it's just it's just minus that product, right? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Should we go through this? All right. Uh, okay, so following the rule here, B, U is on top, D is on bottom. So what is going to be the first product that I'm going to get on the top? X squared minus 1 times 5. Good. Wow, that was really in unison. Oh, I win. Okay, minus. Minus. Minus? 5x five minus 2 times 2x. Two okay, so minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x. Yes, sir. Over. Over. X squared, X squared minus, squared one, minus squared. 1 squared. Good. The quantity x squared minus 1 squared. Very good. So really all there is to do here at this point is to simplify the top. We'll distribute the 5. We'll distribute the 2x. Combine like terms, and that's about it, right? Okay. So what are we going to get from 5x squared minus 5? Minus. 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 But you just We just kind of skipped a step before you Plus 4x. Right? You're distributing the minus 1. See that, Shannon? Yeah. Okay. So how many x squares do we get? Minus 5? 
minus 5x squared plus 4x minus 5. Three. All over. Four. X minus Very good. Okay. All right. So would you agree that the quotient rule is harder to deal with than the product rule? No. I mean, there's a, a little bit. A little bit. But it's just more to deal with. It's, it, it's, here, here's why it's a little bit harder because you have to deal with, you have a, you, there is a, there's still a denominator, right? And you have to remember the minus sign. It's not horribly more difficult, but it, it does introduce some extra stuff. It makes us into a fraction, which we would always like to avoid if we can, right? So the moral of the story is then that you want to use it as sparingly as possible. You really would rather not use the quotient rule really? if, yeah, if at all possible. You'd rather not use it. You'd rather pick a, an easier way to do a problem. So what I want to look at now, really using the quotient rule is just following a rule. Most of calculus is not about following the rules. Most of being good at calculus is about using the simplest rules, right? It's just a big process. So, so let's look at let's look at a couple examples of some problems that we could make easier. That we're not just going to take at face value. We're going to try to pre-write these before we do the problem. So what if we have something like y equals 3 minus 1 over x all divided by x plus 5. <coughs> okay. Now I'm going to see if we can avoid taking the wrong path here. And I if you can stop yourselves from taking the wrong path, I'm happy to let you do that. But otherwise, we'll just have to take the wrong path and look back in hindsight and say what we did wrong. Uh, any ideas here? Well, you, I bet you don't want us to do the question on I don't. I don't. So let's talk about what the about what we would do, and then maybe something will stick out as being a bad idea. Yep. It would be like x to the next one. Okay. Okay, good. So we could rewrite this as... 3 minus x to the minus 1 over x plus 5. What about multiplying it by the conjugate? Um, well, no, it's not going to work. Okay. Multiplying by the conjugate is something that's not really going to help here. It's just going to make things. We don't have a reason to do it. We're not dividing 0 by 0. Yes? I don't know if this will work, but can you do 3 minus x to the negative 1 times quantity x plus 5 to the negative 1? No, we don't want to do that. That's that's algebraically that's going to make things tougher too. Look, look at I just want you to think ahead here a little bit. As we apply the the quotient rule, the top is u and the bottom is v, right? Yes. What's going to be the problem when I try to differentiate the top? You get stuff. Well, let's just look. Let's just see what happens, and then we'll, we'll we'll stop ourselves soon enough. But if I just blindly follow the quotient rule here, look what's going to happen. I'm going to get the bottom, right, times the derivative of the top. Now, what's the derivative of the top going to look like? Um, Wait, what if you positive x? To the oh, positive. You're right. So positive x to the minus two, right? Okay, minus. 3 minus x to the minus 1 times 1, all divided by x plus 5 squared. Yeah. Okay, would you agree that that numerator is pretty ugly? I mean, putting all this stuff together, you're going to end up getting, think about this now, you're going to get, when I distribute this, I'm going to get an x to the minus 1 plus 5x to the minus 2 minus a regular 3 plus an x to the minus 1. That's a lot of fairly complex fractions you have to add up, right? If we wrote that out, let's just look at the numerator. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. That's going to give you uh, x to the minus 1 plus 5x to the minus 2 minus 3 plus x to the minus 1, which is the same thing as 1 over x plus 5 over x squared minus 3 plus 1 over x. Wow. Okay, that's, that's not a fun fraction. To, I mean, we could, of course, do it, but it's going to take some algebra to add all that stuff up. I'm going to have to get a big common denominator. Gregory? Yeah. So, so the, where did the problem come from here? Okay, yeah, it came from the negative 1, didn't it? If we had to isolate where we had an issue, that is what caused all of the unpleasantness. So if we could have avoided that, 
we could have avoided having a negative exponent within our quotient rule, that would have been handy, wouldn't it? Yes. Right? So let's go back and see if we how we could maybe do that. And, and sometimes there's a, understandably, there's a tendency to maybe not want to do this stuff because it requires a little bit of extra algebra prior to launching into the calculus. But you got to kind of think price versus cost here. I mean, it's, yeah, you got to do a little algebra now, but you're saving a lot of algebra later, right? Yes? Um, if you put the x to the negative 1, like on the bottom, would that change? Well, I, I can't do that because it, it's, it's part of a, of a sum on the top, okay. right? But what I could do, what I could do is I could rewrite this as 3 minus 1 over x on the top over x plus 5. And maybe I could simplify the numerator. So if I made the numerator into one fraction, what am I going to get? Uh, 3, negative 3 over x. Well, what do I have to do to get a common denominator in the top? Okay, so this is, I'm just going to multiply the 3 by x over x, right? So this is going to become 3x minus 1 over x, all divided by x plus 5. Okay, now it's time, we're, you're going to take a little small step here algebraically. We're going to remove a training wheel from, from your algebra bicycle. Oh, God, that's good algebra. Anyway, so we used to do this, right? We used to always, quick question, yep. I didn't understand how you got to that on the top. Uh, because here I just have a 3 over 1, and so I'm going to multiply by x over x to get a common denominator. Can you do that with just one term? You, well, yeah, you have to, because look what we're doing. We're just adding We're just adding 3 over 1 to negative 1 over x, right? I need to get x on the bottom here. Yeah, but I thought if you multiply the x over x, you have to multiply it to both terms. Uh, well, no, no, no. I'm multiplying, I don't, because multiplying by... If I multiply it by x. Oh, because it's proportionate. Because well, it's, it's, it's equal to 1. Right? right? Yeah. I can multiply anything freely by 1 and not change it. True. Right? OK? That would be the only thing you could multiply, just the 3 by that, right? It would be an x over x. Right. Yeah, right. OK, so we good? Yes. OK? Now, here's, here's the training wheel that we're going to remove. Instead of having to turn the bottom into a fraction and the top into a fraction and flipping and multiplying, look what the result is if we do that. We get 3x minus 1 over x times 1 over x plus 5 equals 3x minus 1 over x times x plus 5. Isn't it easier just to, if I've got a fraction divided by something, a non-fraction on the bottom, really all I'm doing is I'm just taking the denominator and making that another factor of the denominator. You see that? Yeah, doing this whole process of flipping and multiplying from here is really just the same thing as saying 3x minus 1 over x all over x plus 5, that's just going to become a, fra a factor in the bottom. And this just becomes, in one step, 3x minus 1 over x times x plus 5. Right? Does that make sense? No. You don't have to do it that way, but it's that's really all it is. It really, you're just saying, I've got, if I factor this one out, I've just got a 1 on top, right? I'm going to now kind of visualize this. I'm going to take this fraction, or this, yeah, this fraction off the top, because I can always do this, right? I can say a over b just equals a times 1 over b, right? Yeah. So yeah. think of this whole thing as just being a. I'm just going to take that out front by itself. That's going to become a factor by itself. But what's left there? A 1, right? And when I multiply straight across, then I've just got an x times an x plus 5 on the bottom. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, so it would look like this. Let me try to draw it in like a cartoon in stages. So here's what we're doing. I'm even going to color code it for you. I just think there's an easier way. This is not a major earth-shattering thing. I'm just trying to pass on to you maybe a way to conceptualize this that I think makes it a little easier to do algebra internally. And that's good stuff to learn. So if we have, so we got this.
all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this guy out front. So I've got 3x minus 1 over x times what's left over when I take something out, divide something away from the numerator. And what's the bottom? It's just a product of two factors, right? Yeah. See? Okay. If you know, if that doesn't make perfect sense, you know, it will eventually. It just, it just that's a, I think that's an easier way to think about it. Okay. So anyway, the, the, what's the point of all this? Well, that's a much easier thing to deal with, isn't it? Now, but we're not done. We're not quite done yet, though, because that's still not an ideal. Still not ideal, and I want you to see why. Okay, because now if we if we follow our rules and this becomes y. Still a little bit excessively complicated. What kind of animal do we have here? We at the outermost level, this is described as a what? I just lost oh. it. What, what, what kind of rule am I going to follow? Quotient rule, right? It's a quotient, meaning it's a well, you know, it's meaning it's a it, it's a ratio, right? So I have to treat this if I'm going to differentiate. I have to apply the quotient rule. But within the quotient rule, what have I got on the bottom? <coughs> a product rule. What can I do to the bottom to make that easier, real quickly? Distribute, sure. I would just write it as 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 5x, and that's no big deal. Right? That'd be an easy quotient rule problem to do. Okay, so a little bit of work at the beginning saves you a lot of algebra later. Right? Okay, let's look at some more examples like that. Things we can do to avoid having to do lots of work. Yep. Could you go back really quick? Yep, you bet. That's fine. Yep. What did you say? Okay, I'm ready. I think. I think. We're, we're, we're about done. I think we need 15 minutes. Okay, this will be uh, just yes or no. Do I need to, you tell me, yes or no, do I need to use the quotient rule on this? Okay. Okay. And then we don't have to do it? Maybe, maybe not. Wow, you're tricky. No. Okay, do I use the quotient rule? No. 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 Survey says no. Survey says Absolutely no. not, because, because the 1 6 is just a constant, right? So yeah. I'm just going to. Times. Yep. Right? No big deal. Okay? No big deal. Trivia. Almost. Do you put that in the quotient rule? Say it again. Do you put that in the quotient No, I don't, because this is the constant we just leave out front. Just do yep. So just distribute. So I would just do it like this. I would leave the one sixth out front, and then just differentiate term by term. So this one's going to give me a. Two x plus three. Good. Now I can distribute if I want to. Right. Okay. Uh, almost. Almost. Okay. One more. If you get this one. Two more. Yeah, I got two more, and these are really. These will be quick. Quotient rule, yes or no? Yeah. Looks like a quotient. But the answer is no. In fact, this is this is a common one where people make this mistake sometimes. There is no need for the quotient rule because the quotient rule applies when you have a quotient of functions. Is the top a function? No. No. So how do we rewrite this then to make it simple? Okay. 9 fifths oh. x to the, x to the negative 3. That's it, right? And then you just differentiate. Yes, you got it? Because the 9 fifths is just a constant multiple. So that doesn't, you know, that we can always just forget about those. Pull them out front and forget about them. Okay. And then we would, now we would just differentiate using the power rule. Bring the negative 2 down, subtract, make it be negative 2 times that, times x to the negative 3. Okay, one more. You said that last time. No, we said last time. Oh. Yes, this one would be. No. No. Riley says no. How come? Yeah, the ones you're giving us. No. Oh, okay, there's a pattern here. There's a constant negative yeah. 3 7. Okay.
Okay, there is. Here's a constant. Good. So there's a constant I can pull out front, right? Yeah. What about this x on the bottom? It doesn't matter. Does matter. It doesn't matter. Ah, okay. Good. Good, good. So there's a couple ways we could say this. We could either factor an x out of the top and cancel the common factors. That's a great way to think about it. Or you could even just divide this, split this into separate terms and simplify each term using the exponent rules. Either way, and they're equally good. First of all, let's just get rid of that constant, right? So out front, we've got the negative 3 sevenths. Now what? OK, the, the suggestion here was a good one, was now we factor an x out of the top, leaving us with what? 3 minus 2x. Right? That's good. OK, so we end up with negative 3 sevenths times that Over seven. factor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? OK, the other way to think about that, just as good, would be we've got the negative 3 sevenths out front. Let's split this into separate terms. So now I've got 3x over x minus 2x squared over x. Well, what's that simplify to? 3. 3. What's that simplify to? 2x. 2x. Same thing, right? Sweetness. OK. And then we could not have to use the quotient rule. It would become a very, very simple polynomial. Differentiate term by term, and we're done. OK? Trivia okay. time. Let's go. Trivia time. Can it be easier you guys can have some control over that. We're going to split the room right there. Right there. Okay, so I want to know. Okay, first, what, what's it again? You can give us riddles too if you know riddles. Okay, I can also give you riddles. Here's my first one. Okay. What was the first cartoon ever produced? Steamboat Willie. It was Steamboat I Willie. I knew that. I was kind of close. Oh, really? Oh, there you go. Okay. What did he do? He did 
guys are reading that book of Alan, so. Okay. Yeah. Take the point away. That's right. <laughs> okay, I want to know where did the first What part of the world did the first crucible steel blades come from? The first actual good quality steel blades come from? Yeah. Where? No. Give us a hint. Scotland. you'd expect. Japan? Oh. Give it to us. Give it to us. <laughs> Taiwan? The Guam Islands? I, I, <laughs> the, I think because you got the right region, and so I'm going to give it to you. Yes! What is the correct answer? Correct answer would be Asia. I was going to be looking for anything. Yeah, Let's say um, okay. Who who is probably the probably don't know. It's too random, whatever. Okay, we're just doing random, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I want to know. Uh, in in what country would the Sami reindeer herders be found? The Sami. Nope. Nope. Finland. Finland it is. Okay. Okay, who was the what what British explorer was famously his his this is in the eighteen hundreds. His ship became locked in ice and they spent eighteen months locked in ice while trying to get to the South Pole and his entire crew ended up surviving. One of the most amazing oh, stories. Oh what was his name? That one guy. That one guy. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Take care of Captain Smith. Captain Smith. Captain Smith. He was Ernest Shackleton. Ernest Shackleton. I knew that was a new trivia. New trivia. Disney? Okay, Disney it is. I don't know if this is super well, but I'll... Okay, I want to know uh, what... Looking up, I'm looking up a couple things here. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> 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 oh, 
Okay, we got a little Halloween humor here. Okay, you got a good one. Here we go. Do piano tuners. Please sign right. Is this a joke? X is real. What is it, though? It's real? Is this real? The quadratic formula. Pythagorean theorem. Yes! Point to point. 